What's going on, folks? We are back again, and I got a lot to talk about with you guys. And you know, it's very important that we, as a body of people, have to start realizing that we all we got. And I'm talking about black Americans. We are all we got. So we can't de- we can't be divided. I didn't like seeing a lot of y'all out there canceling Janet Jackson. I didn't like it. Like, I was out here saying all types of things about Janet Jackson. And y'all was the main ones talking about protect black women. Kamala Harris is not black American. We need to iron that out. Kamala Harris is not black American at all. She is a woman of color, but she's not black American. And from the the side of her father, where people are saying that she gets the black side from, Kamala Harris' own father wrote an essay and said that he is of Irish, British, right? On his paternal side, that is basically where he comes from. He said that They're literally, he comes from a slave master. People that have interacted with him, Judge Joe Brown said he has never, ever identified himself as black. He's West Indian. And he has already stated where he comes from. His mother, I mean, um, Kamala's mother, on the birth certificate, put down Caucasian on the birth certificate. So Janet Jackson says, oh, I heard that he not even black. Based off of what the father put out there. And all you hear is people saying she's ignorant, she's she's unintelligent, she's not intelligent. She don't know what she's talking about. If she's all these things, why did a seasoned journalist ask Janet Jackson about politics? Because she was looking for a viral moment. And that's what you guys gotta start understanding about these reporters, especially the ones that don't come from our community and they're not like us. They are looking to make a viral moment. And it looks even better when you get a viral moment out of a black man or black woman. Look how many stories that have come out of this Guardian piece. It was a hit piece. It was sensationalized by Nasheen Iqbal and knew exactly what she was doing. Compared her to Trump. Compared her to extremists based off of saying something that she heard. Kamala Harris in so many interviews has stated, I'm first Indian this, cooking show, I'm Indian. But when it comes for time to run, now I'm a black woman. Someone said, well, in her writing, she says her mom was raising black daughters. Well, if your father never really identified as black and your mom on her, on the birth certificate, put down on the birth certificate, Caucasian, then what are we really talking about? Kamala Harris is the same person out there that will make a statement and say, I'm not going to do something just specifically for black people. 
but in the same breath say, vote for me because I'm one of you. Black Americans, wake up. We got to stop getting to a point in our lives where we say, if you vote Democrat, you're black. And if you vote Republican, you're not black. There's literally, look at the division. Look at the divide. There are literally people in these news platforms that own these companies. Rupert, well, Rupert Murdoch, who owns all of these companies. Even CNN is starting to go a little bit more right. And everybody talk about everything has to always be about race and everything's so divisive. Then I'll ask them a couple of questions. I said, the people that created the Constitution, did they have us black people in mind? The people that put these laws in place, did black, were black people in mind? It's the Star Spangled Banner, were black people in mind? I just asked them that question. I'm gonna step further. Who owns CBS, NBC, ABC, Fox? CNN, Fox News, Newsmax. Who owns all these companies? And they get quiet. And I was like, no, don't get quiet because you're the one that's talking about why is it everything's about race. I said, we don't even own these companies. We don't own BET. Why are you guys only showing uh, when, a, when a black person gets shot by a cop? Why you don't show up when the other, when the roles are reversed? Who own these companies? And I'm gonna tell you why the individuals that own these companies that are us, they are not black. I'm gonna tell you why they put those stories out there. Because it draws views and it draws debate. And if I can get views and debates and arguments between people back and forth, it generates more people to watch, which generates more ad revenue. They get quiet when I talk about this. They don't want to talk about it no more. We literally got people online that are Christians telling you, if we don't vote now, we'll be in trouble. Do you know what they said about our people? They said in 2050, our net worth is going to be zero. Based off the spending habits that we have right now, based off of everything, how we are working, and in regards to financial spectrum, they said by 2050, we're gonna have a net worth of zero. Said we have the lowest household wealth out there, out of all communities. Lowest marriage rate. One of the highest divorce rates. Economically, we are not where we should be. We have 1.7 trillion spending power, and we have not heard any of these folks talk about they're not going to talk about reparations. Not even going to discuss reparations. They don't want nothing to do with reparations. They want to say, let's keep studying it. People's argument on both sides, this is what you hear a lot from black people in our community. What you hear from black people in our community is, if you call out Kamala Harris on anything, you are called a Trump supporter. Or an instant pushback. Well, what else you got? Who else you gonna go with? That's the that's the thing I'm saying as a people. If you can't critique the candidate that you're voting for, you should vote for him. You gotta be able to call them out for the good they do, and call them out for some questionable stuff or things that you're like, no, they ain't right. If you can't hold them to that standard, I mean, look at how it is. Just a difference of opinion of a political candidate, you get called dumb. You can call all of these names. Folks about to basically say that Janet Jackson is ignorant. She don't know what she's talking about. Bobby always is to these celebrities. So here, what they're saying is, there's no issue with a celebrity talking about politics. They just want a celebrity to say what they want them to say. Group thinking at an all-time high. 
There's no more independent thinkers at all. And that's why both of these parties are running on fear. One saying, if you don't get things together, you're gonna have people from other countries coming over here and they're gonna break into your house. They're gonna take over your apartment complex. The other side is talking about what folks are gonna do in regards to what you wanna do with your own life and the government will make those moves. And they're telling Christians this. These same folks that's writing Janet Jackson off and say she don't know what she's talking about politically are, are, are championing and reposting and sharing what Plies is saying. Plies, Busted Baby Plies, is a spokesperson for the political party of the Democrats. D.L. Hughley. Steve Harvey, someone, like I said, I don't knock his business acumen, but there's somebody that was rocking with Trump. Now, at the end of the day, I didn't find any issue with him at least meeting with Trump to see what he was going to do for black Americans. But don't try to jump ship like all of a sudden you all in on Kamala Harris. Kamala Harris was not chosen. She was chosen as a VP, but she was not chosen as a president. I don't know what either one gonna do, folks. All I know is every time you turn around and you watch TV, there's an ad for both. And what I understand is that we gotta stop viewing these political elections, these presidential elections like the lotto. Is your life gonna drastically change whoever goes into office? Is it going to drastically change? We got somebody that I'm saying that she is black, but want nothing to do with her alleged black father. What interaction does she have with black people? Somebody said well, she went to Howard and she was in a, a sorority. Okay. But what black experience has she gone through? Then you got people online, like this dude called Phil Lewis, who was trying to throw Janet Jackson under the bus. And this guy was saying all online that how he's Nigerian and said he was just joking. What black American go online for a numerous amount of years talking about their Nigerian and using a, a black American slur? and said he was just trying to joke about it with his Nigerian friends. And nobody find that weird? And then when somebody apologized, we as a community always quick to accept. We need to stop accepting quickly for words. The apology will be accepted when the actions show themselves approved. Look at our people, folks. Look at our people. When it comes to uniting economically, we don't want to come together. When it comes to uh, uniting uh, in regards to uh, black-owned businesses, look at how all that money was able to generate when it came to putting money up for Kamala Harris. Why couldn't y'all do that with black-owned businesses? Why can't y'all do that with black-owned media? Why every only time we come together is when it's voting for a Democrat? Then shaming someone, and they're like, nah, I don't want to vote. And then call, oh, you're not black. So let me get this straight. Are the Democrats a black party? 
and the Republicans are a black, a, a white party. Or I'm just, I'm just trying to understand the thinking behind folks out there that shame folks for following a certain candidate. I ain't never canceling. Um, I am not canceling Janet Jackson. And now Sheen Iqbal, it was. It found it, I found it very interesting that she stayed on that Kamala Harris talking point, and she made sure that that one went viral. But she didn't stay on that Les Moonves guy. That was the ex CEO of CBS she didn't stay on that topic of how he went out of his way to ban Janet Jackson from everything and got mad when she didn't kiss his ring she didn't stay there because she didn't want to talk about that how his wife still works for CBS and how she still is working on that show Big Brother and your husband had all of those sexual harassment claims. Didn't want to talk about that. Didn't want to talk about the stuff that he was, you know, accused of. Didn't care bringing up Michael. When Janet has her own career, Janet has her own legacy, and this woman, if you really think, if you ask her, how much do you even know about Janet Jackson and her family. Well, the amount of people that 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 out there that look like Janet totally did not stand by her side. You went with Kamala Harris, who just came around in regards to saying, "Hey, I'm one of you," but can't even speak about her experiences in regards to being like one of us. Anytime the question comes about anything related to anything black, she changes the subject. But you out there want to say that she's one of us. Someone that got a constant get out there, oh, I cook collard greens um, in, in, in the bathtub. Someone that got to try to change her words up or change how she talks. And someone said, well, it's cold switching. Yeah, we know what cold switching is. And when you're around your own, it don't, it don't, it don't have to, it don't sound fake when you're around your own. So yeah, there is cold switching. There is how we talk when we're in the work setting, and then we're around our own, but it don't, it ain't forced around our own. 